Hi, this is Kevin with Space Cadets. Coming here today uh, with a video on the Ubiquiti Nano Beam, a uh, small point to point or multi point to multi point antenna. I'll have a picture up that you can take a look at. Um, so, I wanted to make a little mid video addition because I realized I didn't do a very good job of articulating what the Nano Beams are. And if you don't have exposure to them, you may not be exactly clear on, on the role that they serve. So, I'm going to make this very brief, not to make an already long review longer, but. Um, Broadly speaking, the nano beams are a part of the um, Unify uh, internet service provider, specifically wireless internet service provider functionality that they do. It's kind of a side thing to their networking work. And we don't need to get into a lot of detail around that, but they're designed to actually help beam internet to remote locations um, and to connect to a, a main um, access point. But for a lot of end users, and what I've used them for here is really to just um, set up a wireless connection between two locations. In effect, it acts perfectly as an ethernet cable running between those locations um, with an entirely wireless connection. Now, it's not as fast, obviously. Um, this device gets roughly in the 450 megabits per second range, somewhere in that ballpark um, is what you can expect. But, <clears throat> And that's in essence what it's doing. Now, it doesn't use the same type of Wi-Fi like we're accustomed to in our home networks, Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 5 or any of those other things which you're used to in your house. Um, but it uses the same frequency. It's in that same sort of range. It uses the same concept, um, but it does work and operate differently. And they are directional uh, antennas. So they, you know, you can't make a connection if, you know, they're pointing in two different directions, for instance, like that. Uh, that's not how they work. So just wanted to add that quick sort of explainer. Um, it really, it is a way to create a, a network connection effectively acting like an Ethernet cable between two locations with a wireless solution. So just wanted to make certain I kind of provided some extra clarity because I, I actually even Unify's own uh, articulation and some of the stuff uh, is designed for a, a very technical and business specific audience. And so if you're looking to use this in more of a consumer type environment, it may be a little unclear. I hope that helps. Um, Done a couple installations with these and just kind of wanted to talk through some impressions that I have from them um, and provide a bit of a quick review. A um, <clears throat> couple of things. First and foremost, they're nice devices. They're 99 bucks. They're not too expensive. Um, they're small, compact form factor. Pretty easy to work with overall. If you've done networking work before, Wi-Fi, things at your house, it is a more complicated setup. Um, they do make it as user-friendly as possible, but um, you know, if this is your first venture into doing any type of networking or Wi-Fi work, it's probably maybe a step or two too far. Um, but if you've done uh, a lot of work around the house, uh, maybe helping friends, et cetera, with their setups, it's definitely kind of a next step uh, project that you can pick up for yourself. And I unfortunately, I, I've installed the devices that I had, so um, I don't have something on hand that I can show you physically here, but I'll, I'll, I'll link to the, the product itself and you can get a sense of it. But the design is nice. It's a small compact form factor, roughly seven inches across or so. Uh, very discreet. Uh, all the locations I put them in, kind of once they're up, you don't notice them too much. Um, so they're nice and clean, little white, uh, white product. Um, beyond that, they're not that expensive, 99 bucks. Uh, when you think about the cost of maybe having to lay ethernet cable, you know, putting conduit in, running it underground, um, you know, the labor and time for that, it can certainly be a much more cost effective solution um, if you have any type of kind of natural blocks or things like that. So 99 bucks a pop, not too bad. Um, I think the price is, is definitely right. And the performance is solid. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit more detail, but generally speaking, once you get them configured, they're set up and forget it. Uh, they're fine working outdoors. I've got two of them, uh, two installations. I'm waiting to see one of them is in an area that will get a lot of snow over the winter, so I want to see how those hold up, but they should be um, able to kind of work out uh, pretty well. A um, <clears throat> couple of considerations. If you're looking to use these devices, uh, one very quick and easy thing to keep, keep in mind, get them, set them up uh, in a local environment. Don't set them up and try and configure them when they're in their final location. Generally speaking, once these are in locations, these are oftentimes in a spot. If you're going to install them, you want to get them up high. If you can, they're not going to be easy to get to once they are in place. So that pre-configuration can be very helpful. It can also make it so that once you are actually setting them up, you're able to, to try and dial in that alignment, um, 
because it's already got the connection with it if you have an, uh, the, first, the first station or AP in place. Make certain you can get everything configured. Uh, if you want to use the static IPs, I would recommend that. You know, get all of that stuff sorted out in a safe, easy environment. I actually did it in my office for the first installation, just pointed them at each other from about you know eight feet away and went through and was able to get them fairly well set up. You can set them up entirely through the UISP uh, iPhone or Android app. It's pretty easy. However, um, as you run into configurations, it is helpful to have a computer with, a, with an Ethernet port on it. Um, something where you can actually manually key in and get into the, uh, the device itself uh, directly through the IP because there are certain things that you cannot do in the app. But generally speaking, in most situations, uh, barring some you know, major hiccup or concern, you should be able to configure them entirely on, uh, with your phone. So just wanted to have a quick view of the UISP uh, application. This is the iOS iPhone version, obviously, um, and just show what it looks like to manage some of these devices. So I'm actually on the local uh, Wi-Fi here, um, but I can still access the nano beams. You can also do this with their own management uh, Wi-Fi signal. When you first boot them up, it'll have a uh, management Wi-Fi you can connect directly to. <clears throat> but it gives pretty good details, pretty easy to see what's going on. You can make uh, configurations and modifications to uh, the access point frequency channel width all that detail can be set up pretty straightforward um, you can get a good look i'll show the capacity here so again this is pretty clear low line of obstruction and again not a huge distance but uh, plenty of bandwidth available uh, for the devices and again i'm not next to the devices physically at this point um, I'm, I can access this anywhere that I'm connected to the SSID of uh, the network that um, <coughs> the nano beams are configured with. So they do have a couple of different things, different uh, settings that you can use. Um, you can check the antenna alignment uh, and uh, do a few other items. So just the fact that one, you can do a few key things. You can manage the uh, IP address. Uh, if you have any VLANs that you're going to be putting this on, um, all of that. And then you can manage the administration passwords, et cetera. Um, two other things as you're going through the installation. First installation I had, very clear, not a lot of obstructions. I'll show a picture so you can see, you know, it was a, a kind of overshooting a garden area, going connecting a pool uh, to, to a residential house and kind of got it up, got it running, didn't need to touch it. Second installation that I did, um, was a little bit more complex. It was going through a much uh, much more wooded area. Um, and there were other, other buildings closer by that had their own Wi-Fi networks and things. So I did have to spend a lot more time on the configuration and the settings to get it dialed in to really get the performance where I needed it to be. And I found out kind of the hard way, if you're making a frequency selection change, it's very fast to do that. So you know, if you're looking to isolate or to work through and see, you know, how can I kind of dial in and maximize this performance, the frequency changes are very quick to respond. You don't run into really an issue of potentially having a drop connection where maybe you need to walk to the other location to reset the device or anything like that. If you're changing the bus size, um, if you're, you know, going from 40 megahertz to 60 megahertz, 80 megahertz, or whatever that may be, that is a longer, more complex process. It's pretty much a full kind of drop and rebroadcast and then reconnect between the devices so just bear that in mind um there's there's definitely a different there but changing different frequencies to try and find the right spot within the um the spectrum it turns really quickly so you can test and validate really fast that is also a situation where the phone app has some information but when you can uh plug in and dial into um, the device itself, uh, access it, you know, through a browser directly to, to whatever IP you've set it up with, you can get a lot more information around the connection and its performance, what type of, uh, situations that you're seeing. So based interface, um, again, I'm accessing this over the Wi-Fi, but when you're doing setup and configuration, you can get to this just by plugging in directly, going to the IP address that you've set for the devices. Um, this has a little bit more information that you can see kind of right off the bat and providing some longer term uh, trending information and it's a little easier to see what's going on in terms of the RF environment and just where you're at. We have, you know, we could make some channel adjustments and probably increase the throughput here, but uh, we're getting far more than 
what we're getting from our ISP. So this is certainly meeting the need right now. Um, but it's easy to kind of get a sense of if you want to make tweaks or adjustments or what's the status of that connection. Um, and so you can see a little bit more granular information as well around the devices. Um, so again, definitely helpful if you're running in, if you're doing troubleshooting to be able to get to this interface versus using the, the app. A um, couple of addition, uh, additional um, uh, tools that you can make use of for your troubleshooting process, um, and you can get into more of the configuration details. Um, so a little bit more options here. Again, I encourage you, if you're thinking about trying these out, definitely a doable project if you've got a little bit of experience, um, and they've been rock solid since we put them in place. We're now looking at five months, I think, since the first installation. Uh, they haven't dropped once. Um, so really very impressed. Last thing I'll say about the setup and configuration, um, they are PoE devices, but they are not PoE, AT, AF, BT, you know, they're not any of those standards. They are 24 volt passive. They do come uh, with a, a PoE injector, I believe, but just bear that in mind. You cannot just, you know, run an ethernet drop from a PoE switch and expect it to be able to power up the nano beam. You need to have an injector that's going to be a 24 volt. Um, and you can also, Ubiquiti does have a nice little device that I wish I had been aware of in my first few installs, um, <clears throat> where it can do a conversion from, uh, I think it's an AT PoE, excuse me, AF PoE um, line and convert that to the 24 volt passive. So really you just need a little inline device uh, to be able to, to get it set up. So a few things to, to bear in mind if you're doing some research, looking to, to buy a few of these products. <clears throat> um, beyond that, Physical installation is pretty straightforward. I bought a little standard pipe um, that you can mount it on. It's very easy to get it set up, very easy to dial it in. Um, if you're running it externally, maybe you've got an ethernet line, you know, a couple things to bear in mind. One, you're gonna want a little bushing for where you run it um, into or out of the house. Two, you should have some silicone sealant so you can help do a weather sealing on, um, on where you're actually going, kind of transversing between the interior and the exterior. So. Quick things to kind of bear in mind if you run into the hardware store, make certain you grab those. <clears throat> um, otherwise, the alignment is really easy. The actual physical connection is pretty smart. You kind of twist it on to the nano beam, clicks into place. Um, it's relatively easy to release, but it's nice and secure. And you can still move the device around and get it pointed and get it dialed in and get a good connection. The two installations that I, I did, kind of the first few I've done some since then, but the first ones that I did were roughly, first one was 150 yards or so, next one was, I would say, maybe 250 yards in a more wooded environment. Um, performance was really good. Got 100 megabits per second uh, up and down, um, which was in essence <clears throat> maxing out the uh, the internet bandwidth. I wasn't going to set up iPer for anything like that, for anything more robust. But the UISP device was saying, you know, I should have been able to get somewhere between 400 up and down um, based on the actual uh, signal performance. So worked really well, have not had any drops um, <clears throat> in the you know, many months since I did the installations. Um, so performance has been solid, no complaints on that end. And it is once it's set up, once it's configured, unless there's something going on externally that's going to uh, really you know, impact the environment, they're, they're pretty rock steady. So really, really like that. A um, Couple of things just for awareness, uh, if you haven't done this before, you'll see there's some terminology that's used that's a little bit different than maybe what you're accustomed to because they'll talk about an AP and a station, right? You think of like an AP, like, you know, a U6 light, um, you know, some type of mesh setup where it's like actually broadcasting a wireless signal. That's not the case with these. It's really what is the source side and what is the receiving side? So you've got <clears throat> the uh, station and the AP. Um, and so the, <clears throat> the AP is the receiving end and the station is the broadcasting side. So just bear in mind that terminology. The other thing is these devices do broadcast their own management Wi-Fi signal, but they do not broadcast an actual <clears throat> you know, Wi-Fi network that your phones, laptops, tablets can join onto. So you do need, if you're going to you know, create a point-to-point -point connection and then set up a Wi-Fi device, you wanna be able to have a Wi-Fi network you know, on one end of that, you need to make certain you've got an AP that you can actually tie into that system. You need to connect that to the secondary port on the nano beam, um, which was a little cause for confusion. And 
then you can get that. So they do broadcast a Wi-Fi network, but that's just for the configuration and management of the device through the phone app. That's not for connecting anyone else, right, to be able to access the internet or anything like that. So those are a few things I wanted to touch on. <clears throat> um, again, performance was really good. I think the price is right. A little more complicated, a little, you know, different than doing a traditional, you know, or just setting up like a normal Wi-Fi network. Um, but when you've got, you know, a little bit more complex situation than just maybe an apartment and a house, maybe you want to connect different buildings, things like that. These are really great devices for it. They work really well. I would highly, highly recommend them. Um, and again, in many instances, a lot easier, a lot more straightforward than running an Ethernet cable. Um, <clears throat> and they're pretty much all weather, so they, they work really well outside. So with that, I'll have a, a little clip of... Um, one of the installations I did the pool installation so you can kind of get a feel for how they're set up <clears throat> what they look like um, but yeah so just a quick look at how everything turned out here is one of the nano beams uh, set up on the pool location and then if we just turn and we pivot around we can see back over towards the house there's another one on the far side over there so it's roughly if I had to guess, uh, about 100 yards or so. And then that comes over and connects into a PoE setup over here, as well as our U6 flush. So nice setup, nice little Wi-Fi for the pool. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments, appreciate it. and. That I would certainly certainly recommend the device. Um, definitely something to pick up. And again, if you're you know you've done some networking work before, definitely kind of something you can pick up. And it's a little different than your traditional work, but um, it's a do-it-yourself project. You know, it takes a little bit of research. If you have questions, uh, feel free leave a comment, uh, shoot me a note. I'd be happy to provide some context or insights. Thanks.